Welcome, everyone, to That Kind of Nerds Podcast, a weekly show that tells you what is going on in the nerdy world. I am CJ Millen, joined, as always, by Josh Burns and Brian Thornton. What up? Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> or afternoon or good night, depending on when you listen to this. Good. Okay, oh, true. that's wonderful. Uh, as always, I suggest that this is your first episode going to intro.thatkindofnerd.com, and then Brian will undercut me by saying, just listen to this episode. Why don't you stop telling people what I'm going to say, all right? Stop putting words in my mouth. Maybe this is the episode I say, you know what, you should listen. You know what, don't listen to intro.thatkindofnerd.com. I want you to go back and listen to episode 147. Which episode is it? I don't know, but why don't you try it? All right. We'll let that mystery. Uh, we'll just let that mystery happen. Also, I just want to take uh, a time again to thank our supporters on Patreon. Uh, Patreon.com slash that kind of nerd. You guys have voted uh, for us to go see the movie Skyscraper, and we'll have to make yes spoiler cast for it. Um, so uh, I, I'm buying my ticket now. I both love you and hate you at the same time. Oh, this makes me. I happy. just saw Hotel Transylvania three. No one. And cares. the best part about Why? that movie. Why? The best part about that movie was a trailer for Teen Titans Go to the movie. So that nope. should say something to you. No. Nope. What? Um. What's the? When do I have to watch this piece of shit movie? At, at least by the end of the month. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna put All it out right. before the end of the month. Okay. Ah, uh, can't wait. Can't wait. I'm seeing it tomorrow. So, uh, of course, you can go ahead and support the show, uh, get some free merch and swag, but also have a say. Force CJ to see terrible movies that he doesn't want to see. Yeah, you get a say in next month's uh, terrible movie that we're going to be dragged to. So, anyway, let's uh, let's do this. Let's talk about things that can make us kind of happy or just some other news. And starting with the news. I'm happy that I'm seeing Skyscraper. I don't know about you. you. Let's talk about the world of TV and movies in a segment that we call Screen to Stream. Still needs a theme song. Still working on a theme song. I'm not working on shit. These things become inspired. They just happen. <laughs> they just happen. Just in the moment, magic oh, theme. Okay. Uh, Josh, I actually believe this was a subject that you brought to our attention, that AT&T, uh, who just acquired HBO, uh, seems to be changing a little bit of HBO's direction and kind of changing their kind of philosophy here. You want to walk me through this? I dumped it in. Oh, you did, Ryan. I did, but I'm not going to walk you through it. I want to see you struggle. Right, fantastic. So this HBO uh, was recently purchased by AT and T in their huge acquisition and uh, of Time Warner, uh, and they are kind of having some internal discussions about what to do with their model. What they're looking to do is kind of change from being the you know exclusive add-on network to your cable package and kind of sh- shift more to a Netflix streaming style. Uh, in the sense of now you can kind of use HBO Go, you can use all the other apps that are available to watch HBO, and instead of having to like tune into live content, kind of get your binge-worthy uh, content there and your catalog of shows. A- am I accurate with that description, Brian? I believe so. I view this as a, as a reason for me to discount every time Josh says HBO can do no wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the, we can trust HBO. Here, I, mean, I no longer trust HBO. Here's my thing. Uh, honestly... Uh, this is how I use HBO now. I, I really don't watch things except for Game of Thrones. I don't really watch things live on the HBO app. A because there's usually so many people doing it that it has some kind of buffering issues or some kind of login issues. And two, I just rather peruse their catalog and watch at my discretion. I don't ever have any login issues with HBO. No, I just sense so like Game of Th- like Game of Thrones. Like it's it's like it's just too many people. There's been many stories of people couldn't. Who's watch. not watching Game of Thrones live on their TV? People who don't have cable. Like they have a HBO lot of, now, right? They have right, right. So it's but on HBO their now TV. is different than HBO Go. They have it on their Apple TV or whatever. I have HBO now, right? And those two infrastructures are different. HBO Go is a little more reliable than HBO now. There's actually a I, lot of stories about HBO. I now have HBO issues. now. I have never once experienced any issues, but I wasn't able to get through this season of Westworld. Like I lost interest in the middle. That's sad because I haven't watched any of it yet. I, I I saved it all on my DVR. I was just gonna burn right through it. And maybe the, maybe the, maybe that's the problem is that I had to like watch week by week, and I just right. That's the same thing with me too. I much prefer to just binge a show rather than having to do the week by week bit. And that's what they're trying to address. They're saying that's how most people watch TV, and that's how most people consume HBO content. Yeah, but didn't this article also say they were changing their pricing structure as well? Yeah, because HBO is not. It, more the, expensive the, the thing, it's not it already the most expensive, expensive thing. Service. The thing right, I'll say that, is this. That, and that's com- my point. When it comes to leaks and pricing, it's never right. But when it comes to leaks to like strategies and kind of the stuff that's not held by like the marketing company, it's usually pretty spot on. You don't think the pricing is going to affect this at all? 
Oh no, I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that just why why I mean why focus on that? It's that's the that's the part that will be up in the air for the longest until it's actually launched. The the core of the argument is this. Do you feel that switching to a more Netflix like style is good or bad for HBO in the current climate that people watch TV with? For HBO the way it is right now? Yes. Like does HBO bad. need to does it need to change and evolve? I mean, is is that what it needs to do? I, I think that they do need to change, but not because of the bulk of their subscribers. They need to change for, for people like us who want all the episodes dropped day one, right? That's the way things have been going. It's going to be some time before that catches on because the people that want to watch their Sunday night HBO want to watch it every week. The other thing is this, though, if, if I am correct, because I read this article like a week ago, they're doing more television content. Their plan is to raise prices and pretty much turn this into just another Netflix. They're going to do more right. television content, and they're going to drop the movies for the most part. Right. Stop. That defeats so, the whole purpose of HBO to me. Well, well I mean, let's yeah. be honest. HBO is always the one with the the new premieres on Saturday night first. Yeah, HBO is always the one where like I can watch a movie two or three months after after it's been released on Blu-ray and, or whatnot. Oh, and I get some cool television out of it as well. For me, it's it's been about the – see, I, I'm the opposite. For me, it's been about the series, right? It's been about, oh, man, I really want to watch The Wire again. I want to mm. watch John Oliver. I want to watch those for, things. I, for you, maybe, but right. HBO was never well, that I, until I, Game of Thrones. I, right. It, what, well, Game, of Thrones cha- Game of Thrones changed what everything. HBO was as doing. As far as streaming goes, yes. 100% correct, Brian. Like, you're absolutely correct. But that's what HBO is now, and I think this is the smart move. It's going to hurt. It's going to be bumpy, and a lot of HBO, like, you know, loyalists and old school, you know, uh, minded people when it comes to how television gets consumed are all going to get grumpy and say, I want to cancel my HBO. But this is where people want to be. This is how they want to consume their content. When you look at, at Hulu, right? Hulu has Handmaid's Tale, an extremely popular show that comes out once a week on Wednesdays, a Wednesday of all days. But it drops uh, early in the day, and you can watch it whenever it's convenient to your schedule. And then you tune in next week, and then whenever it's convenient to your schedule, you watch the next episode of Handmaid's Tale. It's worked out extremely well for Hulu. And I just think that's something that Netflix needs to – I'm sorry, that HBO needs to adopt and and to change with. I think this is a good thing. I don't think this is anything that should frighten people. And I'm not a big fan of the the, the blockbuster movie showing up on HBO. I find them other ways. I, I, I don't. I don't go to HBO for that. I don't think HBO when uh, I don't. I don't think that way anymore. I think you're the anomaly. All right. I really. I'm do. the market they're trying to capture. So I, yeah. Y- y- but yeah. But nobody. Nobody's canceling their HBO subscription. Right. It, it's not going to happen because at the end of the day, you still have Game of Thrones, Ballers, Westworld, uh, Veep, Silicon Valley. Veep is over. Uh, it, final season is this year. Right. Here's the thing. But uh, they, they're not going to cancel because Veep is still on. I, I, I know you love shows like Veep and Ballers. No, and I, all I, love Silicon I, hate, Valley. I hate Veep. Okay. But I don't think that drives anybody to HBO. I think shows like, uh, well, a show, Game of Thrones, has dri- driven everybody to HBO, which will be ending next year. Yeah. So you're going to have a lot of people... Who are going to be like, all right, you know what? I'll deal with the price hike. I'll deal with the, the changes until I get my Game of Thrones. And as soon as Game of Thrones is done, they will drop HBO. Unless Westworld becomes Game of Thrones. Um, but but season two, according to you, and, and a lot of critics, has already fallen off the deep end. I agree. I don't, right. I don't think it's going to retain anybody. So uh, you bring up an interesting part of this conversation, Brian. And that comes to the, the prequels and spinoffs that we're getting with Game of Thrones 2. And that's going to take some time to go into production and, and to get done. But, I mean, this, this again comes down to the root of this. Would you rather get it a week by week that you have to either have a TV subscription or have to tune in at a specific time to watch it live or have that Hulu model of either week to week and it's kind of available whenever or just drop it all like Netflix does for some of their series? I mean, right now, the way they, they operate, I don't need to be in front of my TV on Sunday night to watch Game of Thrones. I can watch it whenever I want because if I have an HBO app, or I have an HBO subscription, I have HBO Go. Right. The only thing that might change is, oh, I get to binge it all in one sitting. I don't think I don't think people care so much about that because things like The Hands May Tale are so successful. I think it's a great model for Netflix, and we've come to expect it from Netflix. 
but we don't expect it from anyone else. Yeah, but why does that make it bad? And it's not even about it's not even about sitting through and binging it in one day. But like, if you could watch that show every night for a week and a half, isn't that better than every night for two and a half months or one once a week for two and a half months? Yeah, right. Isn't that better? Yep. Like so you get mean- the you get the whole story once a day like for, for, and it only takes 10 days and you're still only watching your one show and you're still going to bed at, at 10 o'clock and whatever i'm not arguing the validity of dropping it all at once i'm arguing so many changes happening at once that people are going just are going to leave hbo because there's nothing drawing them there anymore once you gotta, once you gotta rip that over, band-aid off though what, but once game of thrones is over people are going to drop just it rip and it off the problem but here's the problem that hbo had Back in the early days, Sopranos was huge. Sopranos was cheap to make, but nobody knew about Sopranos for you know until like there were, you had those people who were HBO you know people who watched it, and then you had the people who were like, "I'll just wait for it to come to DVD and rent it from my local video store or my palatial estate." Right, and, and at that time, you had really good content shows such as Deadwood, such as Rome, that were really good were very well received by fans and critics, but were not bringing in enough money, so they had to shut them down. They were too expensive to make. And then all of a sudden, Game of Thrones comes along, and because now all of a sudden we have this surge of people subscribing to HBO because of this one show, we have the money to continue this show, because Game of Thrones is ridiculously expensive. If we lose subscribers due to any reason, we're not going to get another Game of Thrones. Or we're going to get another Deadwood, or we'll get another Rome. That will be really great, and it'll last a season or two, but because the subscribers aren't there anymore, they'll get shut down. And that's my problem. Okay. No, I I, I thank you, because that, that I explained it. I, I understand it better. I know. that That's the point of displaying right, an argument. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not, con- I'm, not conceding, I'm not conceding the point. I don't think your point is invalid. I think it's overstated. That's all. Well, uh, only You're using th- some big words there, and now I'm going to take it as a sign of offense. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't believe that a reduction in subscribers stops a great idea from getting produced and carried out. And I think that HBO especially has learned from the mistakes it made with shows like Deadwood, canceling it far too early, that if you run a show longer, you will retain your viewership. I mean that's that's what AMC did with Mad Men, right? Uh, like people weren't mad, weren't watching the season one of of Mad Men. They weren't mad for Mad Men, and then you know it took them a little while to to kind of get. Same thing with Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad was another show that should have been on the bubble and canceled several yep. times, but it was it was the network saying, "Listen, we believe in the storytelling, the artwork, like we believe in everything that's happening here. We're gonna ride this out." And then, found, but unfortunately, found success in streaming services that brought everyone back to AMC. But you know why AMC can afford to do that? Because all the uh, they showed during that time, other than some of their original programming on Sunday nights, were movies. They were getting their money from people watching movies. If HBO goes goes ahead God and damn. removes the movie, they can't remove movies for sure. They're I'm de- I'm, I'm I completely agree with you there. I, I like right. not having the new release movie on the week it comes out at 8 p.m. on Saturday. That has been their model, CJ, forever. Yes, 8 p.m. on Saturday, new release that's, movie. That's why they're the home box office network, right? It's, it's the, the whole exactly point. right. And they if they get away from that, I completely agree. They're screwed. It was a topic that I thought was very very interesting, and I thank you for clarifying your points. I I, I can't wait to actually see what they do though. So. Only time will tell. And I have no segue, so let's just do this. Uh, RoboCop is coming back again. Uh, this time it's going to be down by the District 9 director. So, like, third time's the charm on RoboCop? Nope. Well, technically this would be a fourth time. But, it was RoboCop 2 and 3. Well, the, yeah. like, but, like, reboot-wise. Well, so this would, this would be the, the fifth time then, right? Well, no, well this, is the fir- this is the third time they're telling the story of how do we make a man a RoboCop? It's the third time. Um, who's going to be RoboCop this time? I don't think they actually have casting. Eh, I don't care. I'll when it, whenever it hits Netflix. So they release it in theaters, you know, late summer, mid August. Um, by late July of two weeks prior, it's on Netflix. 
And that's when I watch it. I noticed you didn't say HBO in that uh, equation. HBO wasn't uh, keeping you. Uh, Apparently, they're not featuring movies, says Brian. <laughs> so I, uh, even shitty ones won't make it there. Now, Brian, RoboCop one. I think I think we can all agree was was good movie. That was that was good RoboCop. Yeah, of course, good Robo, RoboCop. RoboCop two and three, you know, they they were movie. Then, then the reboot of of it uh, uh, also no 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 bueno. Why I three? actually didn't see the reboot. That's kind of the whole point. Why, didn't why, see it. Why a third time? Because the first time? one was so bad. The first one was not so bad. The first one was so bad. There was no need for two and three. There certainly wasn't need for a fourth. There definitely isn't need for a fifth. This isn't RoboCop five though. It is. This is no. The it's fifth. not. This is it's not the, RoboCop five. How many RoboCop movies have there been? But this is the. The, it's the same story told. Ugh, it's not a RoboCop five. It's not a. It's a movie, fifth. Right? It's a no. fifth movie. No, if there's not five movies, this won't be movie number five. I understand what CJ is trying to say that this is the third time we're telling the origin story. I get it. Brian, help me. Um. Well, be hand. I go into my my RoboCop <laughs> thoughts. Um. <laughs> I understand what CJ is trying to say about us retelling this origin story. I don't think. I don't know if that's what's going to happen. If we're going to go through the whole origin story again. But here's the thing. I think we are trying to bring back this franchise because we see how great superhero movies do. This guy isn't a superhero. But he he kind of is. He oh, kind of is. Boo. And we keep on trying to do it because we are trying. They're, they're trying to bank on this success. I mean, Neil Blomkamp kind of did a Robocop movie already. It was called Elysium with Matt Damon. And it wasn't that bad. He had like a, a robo exosuit. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay. I'm okay with Elysium. Yeah. So I mean, this could be interesting. I like Neil Blomkamp. Um, you know, who's the guy who played Murdoch in the A Team? I'm sure he'll be in it, and I'm Shiloh sure it'll be great. Copley. Yeah. Oh, Char Charlto Charlto Cop Copley. Cop yeah. Copley. Yeah. Copley. I'm sure he'll, he'll be, be in it, it too, because that's just how they work. Listen, I'm not going to argue the validity of having a RoboCop movie. I, I I think I think you can do a RoboCop movie whenever, as long as it's done right. And it'll be enjoyable. We'll see. We'll see. It's the one time I'm with Laura Byrne saying, we don't need to reboot everything. This doesn't need to reboot. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It no certainly thing. doesn't need a fifth movie. No thing. <laughs> Josue Figueroa, our dear friend and listener of the show, uh, sent us a trailer this week and wanted to get our thoughts on it. Goosebumps 2, Haunted Halloween. CJ does not like this idea, apparently. I'm reading the look on his face. Aren't you the Jack Black hater? No, I, li- I like. Is he I the like Jack, Jack Black, Black hater? No, no, I, Brian, don't you? No, I like Jack Black. Okay, someone in my life I'm is not a Jack gonna, Black I'm not, hater. I'm not going to sit here and regale you with how much I enjoy Jack, Jack Black. I might put together a tribute, but <laughs> I mean, I, I liked I liked the first Goosebumps movie. Believe it or not, I thought it was fun. It was enjoyable. It's everything I wanted to see in a Goosebumps movie. I have some issues with this trailer. Please continue. It's now turned into like a Disney Channel movie. Yes, it all has. it is is like eight year olds. And they find an abandoned house. Yep. And we open a book, and this book apparently released all of the monsters. Like they just Arl Stein had one book that he wrote every like combined his entire universe. Apparently, I don't know. It seems like it's trying to become like it's trying to do like a Stranger Things thing, but with goosebumps. And I don't see it working. All I see is like I could I could probably watch this on Disney Channel on a Saturday night. That's what I felt by watching the trailer. Whereas the first one seemed like oh, it's a fun young adult horror mystery movie, and Jack Black's there and he does some funny stuff. Great. I don't get that from this. Yeah, no, I get a completely different feel, which is someone rushed a script when they said, "Hey, that thing worked." And and then Dude, they just did Hollywood for it. So yep, Disney Channel movie. This is totally a ripoff of the Stranger Things, yeah, type feel. In fact, it's got one the one kid from It in it. Stephen King's It. The yeah, I'm just, the, I'm the, just the newest this, version this. of It. The, it's got the chubby one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Who who by the way is uh, playing the you know Matarazzo role here? Yeah, right. So, no thanks. Don't, I didn't see the. I didn't see the first one. Don't so, don't, is, don't need. I enjoyed the first also, one. Also, no Jack Black. Like the thing that like what made Goosebumps kind of you know 
quirky and kind of kooky and, and all right, I can I can watch that movie. That's not that's not a problem. Wait, wait, so no Jack, Jack Black. no Jack Black, no so no R. L. Stein in the movie. So basically, this is just like Jumanji with with oh a, a bunch of monsters. You got it. That's a great analogy. It's like Jumanji. Yep. But with with a yeah, a bunch of different monsters in a less real world. Yes. Thank you, Josh. You're always there to to put us on the right path. Mm. How about this? How about a trailer we can get behind? How about a simple favor? I could get behind that trailer in a few ways, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> I can't. So Anna Kendrick. Are you what? kidding me? Well, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Let me intro this, and then we can yell at Brian for that ridiculous statement. Ugh. I have no desire to see this movie. I'm not going to hard pass, and here's why um, I won't hard pass. Well, you shouldn't hard pass. I'm uh, not, because I do love Anna Kendrick. Uh, Blake Lively. I was just say, yeah, she, Blake she, Lively, Anna Kendrick together in the same movie, and it feels like. Like what? Gone Girl or uh, what was that movie with Ben Affleck? Girl on the Train. Girl on the tr- no, no, not Girl on the Train. The one with Ben girl Affleck. Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Girl no, who kicked the shut, shut up. Girl on the Spider Web. Girl who does things. How Stella got her groove back? Yeah, I think I think it is Gone Girl. It is, is it Gone, Gone Girl? Yeah, it's it by was. the same like uh, producer as Gone Girl. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, it is. Right. Okay, yeah, this is this is the one. It, it is. It's like Gone Girl, which was really good. Uh, yeah, it seems a little bit, uh, you know, kind of close to Gone Girl, like really close to Gone Girl, but it looks fantastic. I think seeing these two actresses in, in this kind of role would be really fun and entertaining. Yeah, for sure. Okay. There's, now, Brian, there's going to be a story there. Now, Brian, why the hell does this get a no? Just based on trailer. Why is this a no? Uh, a couple things. I've seen this movie before. Girl Who Goes Missing that had a sordid past that I've seen it. it it's been done. Um, and I'm not a fan of Paul Feig as a director. I am because not of like his, his work past three on what on the heat on spy on Ghostbusters. Uh, oh, he's a Melissa it. McCarthy guy. Uh huh. So you don't like this movie because of his association with Melissa McCarthy. No, I just haven't seen anything <laughs> directed by him that I enjoy yet. Whether or not he chooses to put her in all of her movies is, all right, is irrelevant. Let's, let's OK, let's assume for a moment. That this guy can direct actresses not named Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, and and he's taking a darker approach, a darker tone to it. This is a this is a. I mean, he's not doing a like, straight up. I, I'm, yeah, I gotta call bullshit because I think we've uncovered the root cause. <laughs> it's not. Nope. I don't. Sounds, I, no, I can't I believe approve. anything you say from this point right. forward That's because funny. I fucking I just I just you, went in there and picked it out. My point it. is, this trailer was not like so intriguing that I'm like, I have to find out what happened Here's to what? this girl. No. What What is this? What, what's his name? Paul Feig. Paul Feig. Spell. F E I G. Are you pulling up his IMDb? Because now I'm we're gonna to. we're just just a little. I just want a little walk through. Just for my for myself. I just want to make sure I'm not jumping the gun because I have I have a theory, but I, I can't prove it out unless I look. Okay. You said the Heat, Spy, and Ghostbusters. You, I mean, he did seven seasons on The Office, two seasons on Nurse Jack. He did fifteen episodes on The Office. He directed 15 episodes on the Fine, episode. 15 episodes. It's still, it's still over I'm seven not, I, years. I know. Right? I'm just saying. You, I mean, there's probably... I can't stand Arrested Development. Had you said he directed seven episodes of Arrested Development, I would have said, but I don't like the guy. Weeds, no. Right? Just There's a bunch of shit in here. Nurse Jackie, meh. But what you did was when... Melissa McCarthy, Melissa McCarthy, Melissa McCarthy, and you, if you'd have said nothing, credits. If you'd have said nothing but bridesmaids, I'd have been out. I'd have, I'd have been in one hundred percent agreement. You just misread your audience a little bit. You revealed, you revealed your your true motive. <laughs> you know, Melissa McCarthy is also in bridesmaids, right? And, uh, that's why I said you could have had me and there. You and, and, just and done again, it and not thrown out three other I Melissa get McCarthy it. movies. But he's done a bunch of other stuff. I named the last three movies he did. I understand what you're saying, Josh. I got you. Whether you did or didn't. It's irrelevant. Right. All you did was lead with Melissa McCarthy movies. That's all we were able to do. Which were the last three movies he did. Actually, four. But what he's saying is there's When Pigman found Michael Caine and, and, and Gene Ackman on screen, he just left the room. That's all I'm saying. I found my thesis statement regarding your argument here. You're wrong, but okay. You can believe whatever you want to believe. Wait, so Josh, are you now not on board for this movie because of the the director's pedigree? Oh, not at all. No, no, no. I'm just saying 
Brian's full of falsehoods, and I want to see this movie very badly. I didn't find this trailer intriguing. I love Anna Kendrick. I love Anna Kendrick. I will watch almost anything she does, which is why I'm not hard passing, but I am not running to the theater to see this stupid movie. I'm not I'm not running. I'm not running to the theater. Uh, neither am I. But this is Movie Pass A what is it now? A plus premiere. My AMC, yeah, A-list? yeah, whatever whatever the free movie is. That's sure, sure. this is a free movie. I'm pretty sure there's a couple other things I want to see before I see this. I'll see right. Predator twice before I go <laughs> oh, see this. Oh. That's just mean. No joke. So in our endeavor to always help you with figuring out how to maximize your Amazon Prime membership, I present to you our newest segment, Exploring Amazon with that kind of nerd. In honor of Amazon Prime Day, we always want to make sure that you can maximize your Amazon account. Uh, so there is a list here of some of the some good action movies that are available to you on Amazon Prime Video. Uh, I'd love to get the feedback from the guys here and uh, see if maybe you can watch a movie on Prime Day. Yay, movie watching on Prime Day. So wait, I want to start. But these are available right now, right? These are available right, right, now. right now. Right now. Right now. Right, right, right now. now. Right now. You can explore well, these movies by exploring Amazon with your exploration app. Here, just, 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 you know, and you can choose to put this at the beginning, but the list of movies on this list of action movies where we're exploring through Amazon and the exploration of other movies on Amazon, <laughs> um, you will find some movies that include exploring, such as exploring space, like Star Trek from 2009. You can explore New York from Escape from New York. Uh, you can explore Never Going Back with Jack Reacher. Uh, you can explore The Lost Ark with Indiana Jones. You can explore the 310 to Yuma, because that is indeed a train, a place that you can explore. Uh, you can explore bomb defusing with the Hurt Locker. Uh, you can explore how free fire is with Brie Larson and Charlton Copley. <laughs> uh, you can explore how it is to be a warrior with two guys I've never seen before. Is that Tom Hardy? Uh, never Tom, Hardy Tom Hardy and Hardy Joel before. Edgerton? I've seen Tom Hardy before. Um, you can explore the, uh, the, in, in the uh, relationship building of waxing on and waxing off with the Karate Kid. Uh, and apparently you can explore what it's like to be, a, I guess, a bomb defusal dog in Megan Levy. I don't know. Those are the 10 movies. Uh, there are 10 on this list, and a few of them, I think, are ones that you've never seen before. So uh, they, I, they're highly recommended by us. Uh, so I suggest you go check them out. I, I would, for one, uh, recommend that you watch Escape from New York. Uh, it's from 1992. It's, I think, severely underrated. Kurt Russell is a If you haven't seen Escape from New badass. York, shame on no, you. There's a lot of people who haven't seen no, it. No, fuck Brian. that. Shame on you. Uh, Shame. Just like I know there's people who I know that there's people who haven't seen Warrior. Warrior was a movie that after it ended, I Warrior literally stood was up and cheered in awesome. the theater. It was so awesome. So what what is a movie? <laughs> what is a movie from this list that you think is worth the time to take out of Prime Day and to watch? Um, I think I think everybody should watch Star Trek. Um, so that if it gets enough views, they put all the Star Trek movies on Amazon Prime for you to explore. They're and amazing. Screw with CJ. All the Star Trek. Fall in love with Star Trek. Brian, you by watching this movie. Josh, you said that you liked Warrior. What 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 was it about Warrior that you think maybe people didn't see the first time or or just haven't ever tuned into it? That movie was like gut wrenching good, and it was a uh, it was a comeback story as as well. Like it was a comeback story from every fucking angle. Yeah, for everybody, it was. It was awesome. It was, I mean, it was really a great movie. I can't tell you how many times I've watched Warrior. Seriously. It's its upwards of 10 at this point. Yeah, it's, it's definitely worth exploring on Amazon Prime, 100%. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we know, I love to go around the internet. I like to find the weird. I like to find the obscure. And then, of course, I ask for a tech perspective. Hang on. Oh, yes, because sir. because I feel like uh, we should address the fact that you weren't supposed to be here tonight. I was not supposed to be so here So in tonight. the show notes, you have put... <laughs> the intro that I was supposed to do, and then said, P.S., good luck interrupting yourself. Ha 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 ha. So. That was, that was accurate. <clears throat> oh, you want to do this? I want oh, to- CJ, you may not be here this week, but that doesn't mean you didn't go around the internet to find the weird, the fi- to find the obscure, and g- ask us for our tech. Boop, 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 boop. Perspective. Did it. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Thornton interrupting himself, introing the segment. Tech perspective. It's really creepy when Josh does yeah, it. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, like, it's, like, it's, like, the, it's it, like the grudge ghost. Take it and own it. It's <laughs> yours from now on. Uh, listen, this, this, this really isn't so much like normal tech perspective stuff, just really kind of big news. If you were a user of TimeHop, 
uh, your data is 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 out there. We're talking names. We're talking phone numbers. We're, email we're talking addresses, time. Data they took your birth. time. Uh, they they took gone. everything from you, including your time. You're absolutely right, Brian. Over three million people were affected by this leak. Uh, so just assume that if you ever use Time Hop, even for like an afternoon. Your data is out there. Go change passwords. Go, please, for the love of God, get a password manager. Just go get one of those. They're they're phenomenal. Uh, and then, of course, reevaluate why your is life. Your password, password, really? It's password I mean, one on. two three, Brian. Change, I put one two up. and three afterward. People I don't, care. don't know numbers. Mm, people know numbers. Uh, so listen, it's just it's just a thing. I think people should be made aware of. Most people weren't aware of this. Uh, I know that uh, my wife got an email saying that her data was leaked. Uh, so it, it it's affecting a, a, a lot of people around my office. Uh, so please uh, go change your passwords and just be mindful of you know kind of what you allow access to on the internet nowadays. I never use time hops. That's oh, that's good. fine. That's good. But I love time hop. Said no one ever. I love time hop. Really love it. Do you, do you love it now that your name, phone number, date of birth are now plastered on the internet for anyone to know? I mean, I, I I didn't delete it off my phone. It's still there. I used it today. Listen, I don't use social media for the express reason that I don't want to remember the stupid shit that I do on a regular basis. <laughs> Why would I need another app to remind me of the stupid shit that I did six years ago? Hey, Brian, remember that time you dropped your cheesesteak on the street and ate it anyway? <laughs> that was great. First off, <laughs> in order for Time Hop to tell that you never that. never happened, by the way. For, I'm, in, sure. In order I, for any service to remind you of that, not only A, would have had to happen, but B, you would have also had to post it. Which like, you, you would have, have never done ever. You would have had I, to I say, do. drop cheesesteak on ground, ate it, yum, hashtag, hashtag delicious. Hashtag blessed. Right, hashtag blessed. <laughs> like, you would have to do that. So, so hashtag five second rule. So, 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 what's wrong with you? I, I don't, I don't use this stuff. This is why I don't use this stuff. Josh Burns, you are a uh, uh, a master in the kitchen. Uh, re- respect your your kitchen game. It, it's 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 up there pretty much. Thank you. And, and and I picked this topic specifically for you to either tear down or build up, and I'm really excited to see which way it goes. Okay, Ovi is smart Tupperware that tracks when your food will go bad. It's a little button that you put on there. Uh, It'll tell you when things are at their peak freshness or things need to get thrown out, how long it's been in there, all the fun statistics that go with normally looking at Tupperware and then smelling it at some point going, oh, no, that is not good. Uh, And it's aiming to remove that from you. It's also paired up with smart things like Alexa to tell you to add support and all your smart speakers. Good idea, bad idea, or what? Um, so is this... It'll also check recipes based on the ingredients that you so have in your fridge. It says their smarter wear is like Tupperware that tracks when your food will go bad. That's the tagline, right? Yes. But these things are just little things that you put on containers, right? Correct, yes. Or they come with their own container. You also can buy a container with it built in. Mm, with it built in. So, yes. okay, okay. If it's built, is it built in or is it built on? Built on. Okay. My, I think my biggest problem with determining when a poo, uh, f- like any piece of food <laughs> is at its peak freshness. <laughs> I, I, I find it funny. You I'm almost sorry. said pooed. Because that's, I mean, pood. essentially, look, once, like once the food up. goes in the fridge, like right. after it's been cooked, I'm done with it. That's it. You're the same way as my wife then. Leftovers are, are not a thing. My wife and kids eat the leftovers. I, I You, you nope. won't touch them. Right. Okay. Like there's, there are very few foods that could be reheated back to their original sure, sure. state. Right. Very, very few. Um, th- like basically this is just like, here's what it is. It's a piece of tape that my mom put on the Tupperware <laughs> with the day on it. Right. And then you look at it and go, this is June 13th. It's February. I probably shouldn't <laughs> eat that. Right? right. Or you you say, it's been two days. This is probably still okay for me to eat these carrots, which are like one of the only foods that actually reheat well. Sure. This is, it's just, just put a piece of tape. So so here's the the, the flip side to this, I'll, I'll say, Josh. Uh, a lot of people are trying to broaden their horizons with food, right? They they want to they want to do something unique and different, especially if you have like the same dinners over and over again, and you're like really tired of this. Yeah, sure. So there's a lot of ways to make yourself branch out. 
But sometimes just letting a computer or a program kind of do that work for you is uh, a good outcome for some people. Yeah. So with Ovi, one of the things you can do is you put it in a container or a clip, whatever. You, you, you tell Ovi, this is spinach. This is chicken. This is yep. that, right? Yep. And then you say, hey, dingus, give me a recipe based off the ingredients I have. And it's like, yeah. hey, here you go. This is your recipe for the day. Go buy more spinach, by the way. That actually totally makes sense. Use, right? So use a piece of technology to create more options, right? Correct. Yeah. So what I did was I chose to use a piece of technology. I don't know if you've ever used it. It's called Google. What I did was <laughs> I said, find recipes from ingredients. And I got 421 million results in, in <laughs> 0.43 seconds. And one of them is a site I already use. And I'm like, oh, that does that? Great. There's another one. This is, uh, tell me how crazy this is. Top apps for finding recipes for ingredients you already have. There's, you can get a ton of these apps for free, right. by the way, like Supercook or all, like all recipes. I already use all recipes. Right. And they have this dinner spinner where you go in and you just say what you have, what you just did. You have to tell that stupid little thing. That's what this is. That's going to take infinitely longer than what I just said. To check. This is all a terrible idea. And it comes with a, a terrible idea price tag, as, as you would expect. Uh, three Ovi, Ovi, sorry, three Ovi smart tags, three smartware containers, and the hub. Yeah, it, it there, there's a hub. It well, what's it going to communicate to you? Uh, right, it retails. You need a hub. Everything, every good piece of every, technology needs a hub. Absolutely. The, all the Ovi stuff is is ninety dollars retail. I, I, no, I'm sorry, I I can't get behind this. At, at Guys, all. remember, Google is free to use. All, all you have to do is type in find recipes from ingredients. You will get 421 million results. On, on Kickstarter, this project has 462 backers who have pledged $64,176 at the time of this recording, bringing it to life. I think they've actually hit their backing goal. So, Josh, this is going to be a thing. This is, this is, this is going to come out in the world. Not in my house. Thanks, thanks, thanks Kickstarter. You always know how to bring down, bring down the world. What a piece of tape! Well, then let's do this, guys. Let's make the world a little happier today. Let's talk about the world of comics. How it's affecting TV, how it's affecting movies, but most of all, how it's affecting Brian. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Cape Talk. Cape Talk! Uh, as we know, Marvel and Disney, in general, have been uh, kind of teasing around with this idea of like de-aging people for movies teasing around they've done it in like four movies yeah and it's been pretty damn good so far so it was really good as we're going to talk about later in ant-man and the wasp i thought they did a really good job with that but samuel jackson is going to be de-aged for all of captain marvel they're doing it for the entire movie we usually get it for a couple minutes we're talking the whole time that he is in this movie he's being de-aged now, see, I don't think this is necessary because I'm thoroughly convinced Samuel Jackson has not aged since 1994. <laughs> so I think it'll be fine if they just throw him in there with two eyes because he's missing the one eye. Uh, okay, uh, okay. I, I thank you for explaining that because I was confused. Yeah, I could tell. I don't I, know why. I, I, I didn't know what was happening. Josh, do you think this kind of like has has Disney and Marvel done this well enough that it's not like Uncanny Valley or a. Uh, polar express like can you deal with this for an entire movie uh i agree with brian <laughs> <laughs> it's usually the other way around that's very interesting well you know how they do this right how they've done it no i actually they... don't how they do this uh so, pills and lotions uh yes uh you know and the fact that you know michelle pfeiffer is also ageless um no i mean in in uh in ant-man the wasp most notably i read an article that they actually have younger actors go in there and, and do the role and then they CGI like the face. I don't think they CGI the eyes because that's where you get into uncanny Valley territory. Right. But like the facial features, they'll go in and CGI that. So there's some poor kid. Who's there's, gonna... there's somebody there playing a role that <laughs> face will never be seen. Never in be fact, seen. in Ant-Man and the Wasp, it was Lawrence Fishburne's son. I want to say. Oh, cool. Who played young Lawrence Fishburne? But not young Lawrence Fishburne. Right. So, yeah. So so they'll get, get some poor soul on the set for the entirety of the film and just say, 
CGI his Sam Jackson's face on it, and no one will know who that person is. He'll be in the credits. He'll get his recognition. He'll be on the IMDb's, but no one's going to care. Interesting. I actually never do that. Thank you. The more you know. The more you know. Joshua Burns, there is something you have said consistently throughout this podcast, and I think it holds true. Give me all the Jeremy Renner. Uh, I watch yeah. all, all the Jeremy Renner. All the Jeremy All Renner. the Jeremy Renner. All the time. Jeremy, Jeremy Renner has officially been cast in Spawn. Give me all the Jeremy And he will be playing, and this is where Brian is. Welcome back to you, buddy. Twitch Williams. Okay. I, I don't know who is. Twitch. I find this odd because they were supposed to do a Sam and Twitch television show on BBC. Surprise, surprise that Todd McFarlane is weird and not following the rules that everyone else kind of know. No, well, maybe they'll still do it. Who who just is not without Twitch the Williams? He, he's just a cop. He's legitimately a cop. Just him and, and Sam. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, I'm I stopped reading Spawn before they even really delved into the character, so I am not the guy to talk about it. Yep, there you go. What what else do you want me to say? I, I thought Mr. Fox's representation had something to say, maybe about. about the I Jeremy mean, Mr. Renner. Fox is extremely uh, excited to work with Jeremy Renner, especially with his uh, background in makeup. I'm sure he's going to be able to help with some of the burn marks that will happen in Spawn. Um, you know, Mr. Fox is, as you know, very reasonable and, and, you know, did not demand that Jeremy Renner be cast in this role, but he did strongly urge that Jeremy Renner would be in this role. I, I have a feeling that uh, either Mr. Fox or Todd McFarlane listened to this podcast and said, ah, Jeremy Renner and everything, we get nerds to go see movies. Therefore- well, I would, I would love to say that Mr. Fox does listen to this podcast, uh, but he does not. He chooses not to support me in any of my endeavors, um, and that is his prerogative as, as being Mr. Fox. Stains. No, I mean, it's, it's all right. He's an important guy. He, he does his thing. He, you know, he's got that Shazam show now. He's fine. All right, let's 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 talk about the topic I've been I've been putting off this whole week. Joaquin Phoenix has opened up about the fact that he is signed on to a Joker movie with DC, and his response really was, "Well, you know, obviously, I I, I care deeply about the projects I do, and I think about them before I sign on. I like Todd Phillips." To which we said, no shit. If you just willy-nilly jump into roles and say that to people, they'll, they'll be upset with you. You've added no – you've added nothing to this except for the fact that you've confirmed that you're in this movie and that it's 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 actually happening. I'm sad. So he's added nothing to the conversation. All I just said was I think about the movies like basically, hey, guys, I'm not going to just you know jump into this and do it half ass. I really think about the movie. Like every actor who's ever took a role ever – Said, I really think about it before I just take it. You know, he didn't say anything, but he he confirmed this movie is real and happening. And and, and I, I we've talked about this. I don't want I don't want this movie. The, oh, the Joker shouldn't have an origin movie. It shouldn't happen. Yeah, I'm very tired about talking about that. I know, but now it's real. We were always going. It's, oh. it's been real. It's been real. I don't give a shit what Joaquin Phoenix says. Joaquin Phoenix can say whatever he wants about. How real the movie is. It was happening. We knew it was happening. The moment they signed a director onto it, we knew it was happening. <sighs> Good job, Joaquin. You read the first act of the script. Any <sighs> thoughts, Josh? Yeah, I'll watch it. I mean, you know, put it up there. Yeah, of course. I'm going to watch it. Right. Throw it out there. I probably I mean, won't be I, happy but, about watching but it, that's, but I'll but watch that's it. that's really what it comes down to. It is Are people going to watch it? Yes. And <clears throat> once they do, right, how initially bad mediocre or slightly above average the results are is going to determine whether everybody else sees it if this movie is anything better than mediocre it's going to bring everybody back i mean i'm on board with seeing todd phillips do a superhero movie i think that'd be great i just anything better than mediocre cj and everybody comes back (sighs) all the people that that said i'll never see another dc movie again because of these recent pieces of trash. Aren't there a lot of other movies that have to happen before this movie? No, this is does not take place in the extended universe. It's its own thing. Right, but They've other been very D- upfront about that. But there's other DC comic book movies that have to happen before this movie gets made, right? That could affect this movie. I don't think so. You got so. Aquaman no. and you got... Nope. You don't have it has a- nothing to do with Joker. Nothing. Listen, no, no, no. The but, only, but no, the whole thing of I'll never see another DC movie even again. Even from that standpoint, the only movie that is actually slated to release is Aquaman. Everything else is in limbo. We don't know if Flash is ever going to come out. We don't. Ha- we have a script writer for Batgirl, but you don't have a director anymore. There's 
Everything else is in limbo. Flash is a trump card, right? Because you do a few more movies and you you have let's say you have a Flash movie ready made. Right. But you're waiting so that you can use Flashpoint and reboot everything. Right. My my point was was this, and I'm sorry if it wasn't clear. Josh, you said that if this movie is anything better than Mediocre, it will bring back the people who said, I'll never watch another DC movie again because of the trash they put out. What I'm saying is I think there's three to four different movies that are going to come out that are DC related before this Walking Phoenix movie comes out. So if they are that bad, right, three, four things, again, are just me- less than mediocre. Those fans have already said, I'm not going to see another DC. But I'm oh, telling yes, you. Yes. And then when when a movie but, but is. But just because slightly- Joker, they will they will watch this. Absolutely. OK, but I'm I just also telling clarify. you there's only one DC movie coming out officially and that's aquaman right and we just but we don't even have a i guarantee you this movie comes out before flash <laughs> wow all right i guarantee wow it. that's a bold it's a bold statement common let's see if it they off. just lost another director and half I, of their cast okay i just i that's crazy but okay. that we, we have no idea if that movie's going to happen i'm, I'm, I'm just know, i'm being I, real that's fine oh oh i'm sorry i'm sorry shazam is the only other movie that's slated for release <laughs> Right, yes. Shazam. We have Aquaman, Which I think and we fun. have Shazam. And right. don't get me wrong, I'm excited for Shazam. Me too. Yep. But that is it. That is all that is done and in the can and ready to go, or even well, Wonder Woman 2, right? We have Wonder Woman 2? Yeah, Wonder Woman 1984. Wonder yes, Woman 1984, okay. Aquaman, and Shazam. Those are the three movies. So there's three right. movies right there. Wonder Woman's going to be fine. Shazam's going to be fine. Aquaman's on the bubble for me. I think it's on the bubble for a lot of people, so, no pun intended. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I didn't even realize the pun there. Hey, all right, accidental pun. All right, so I mean, we'll, we'll uh, as with always, we'll see. But the uh, the mantra of is it a superhero movie? Yes, I will go see it. Probably apply. So just we'll just have to eat that sour pill and hope that AMC or Movie Bass pays for that movie, and and not me and not Brian and Josh. You should get on that. I'm serious. Yeah, I think you're right. We we go to uh, Sock and Valley more often than not. Yep. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you have not seen Ant-Man and the Wasp, thank you so much for making us your walk around your neighborhood and your drive to work, because this is your official spoiler warning. We're going to talk about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Also, again, shame on you for not seeing Ant-Man and the Wasp. It's a great movie. You you should totally go see it. So uh, for those of you who are going to be seeing us next week, have a great day. Check out uh, shop.thatcounter.com. Bye. Is that really how you want to end that segment of the show? Is it? I don't know. Bye. Bye. Whatever. How would you end it? Good night and good luck. <laughs> really? Really? No. Okay. That's, that was basically as good as bye. And that's how it goes. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. And that's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, I like it. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. Let's 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 get into Ant-Man and the Wasp, but before, before we do, before we well, get Let's in, get all up into Ant-Man and the Wasp. Before we get into Ant-Man and the Wasp. Let's oh, let our, we're going to get in it. Let's let our fans all let's, up in that quantum let's, realm. Let's let those people talk doing in. all sorts of quantum things. <laughs> and I want to highlight dirty quantum things. Really, just gonna. <laughs> and I want to highlight uh, one in particular, and that is a friend friend of the show, TD. We haven't heard from him in a while. TD is working on his podcast behind the cut, uh, so he he was a little busy. But I said, "Hey, man, you probably saw him in the Wasp. Why not record something real quick? You have your own podcast. Send it our direction. We'd love to hear with it." He said, "Absolutely." And uh, before I hand, uh, the, the, the hand, <laughs> be hand, we play a the TD's message. Play his message. <laughs> let me let me tell you a little bit what, what's going on. I got a message that said, "Sorry, didn't have time to record." But here's my written review of Ant Man. To oh, which I said, t- "To which I said, sure, I will accept your written review of Ant Man. However, I will read it with the British accent on the show." To which he said, "Okay, that that, that, that that's fair." So here is my terrible British accent of me reading TD's hot take on Ant-Man. I hope you enjoy it. I feel like the movie was more lighthearted than other Marvel films. Uh, obviously, having some of the best comic relief with Paul Rudd and Michael Pena make the movie feel that way. The flow of the movie was pretty straightforward and solved some of the plot holes that other movies had left. The only question I have was when that building kept shrinking down smaller and smaller, and then in the car chasing scene, when the car shrinks down, wouldn't that building go to like the quantum realm? I, I kept thinking that when I was watching the film. All in all, it was a decent movie. Not, not a top Marvel movie, but around the same as the first one for me. Also, it will be interesting to see how Paul Rudd gets out of the quantum realm. And can we please make a here is what happened with Luis for every Marvel movie starting in order and going into Infinity War. That would just be great marketing. Cheers, TV. Oh, that's why you said British, because he said cheers. He said cheers. Tally-ho, good sir. <laughs>
Ginny! We have thoughts while we eat our bangers and mash and fish and chips. So, Josh, you, it sounds like something in that review, uh, piqued your interest? The building within the car shrinking to the, I don't, I don't see why it would shrink into the quantum realm. It would just shrink smaller than it currently is. Like they're not, they're not modulating their, their regulators or whatever. Like the, the whole thing that causes that whole shebang to have, I don't, I'm not going to pretend to understand most of it, but this doesn't seem like inception where at some point you go see Ken Watanabe. It's not that. Okay. That's right. You're not you're not shrinking in the limp. I think we have a fundamental misunderstanding <laughs> of the quantum realm. size. Sure. Right? You can't shrink out of a realm. You're just smaller. Gotcha. Unless you change your stupid regulator. Did I miss something there? No, no, no. I think you're right on. I just Yeah, so unless there's some sort of changing of the regulator, it's just smaller and smaller and smaller. And it clearly doesn't matter how small you make a building when you put it back. It has a solid foundation. We're gonna we're gonna get we're gonna get to that. So I I have TD. I have many problems Mm. with the shrinking of a building and and vehicles, especially uh, also as well. But mm, I don't agree with the quantum realm thing. Sorry, sorry, buddy, but I think he's right. So let's start with first impressions. Start with Brian Thornton. There, first impressions. Leaving the theater, how'd you feel after watching Eight Man and the Wasp? It was good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it immensely. I thought it was better than the first Ant Man. Is yeah, it the greatest it was, Marvel movie ever? No. I thought it was far better than the first one. But I, I, I did enjoy I, it. I liked it very much. I, 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 I know. I, Text me. I said that. I enjoyed it uh, as well. It, it, it felt like uh, like Edgar Wright's first movie done all the way through. I liked the the humor was was balanced with the good. But action. this was Peyton Reed. I know, but it felt like they're just like, what would he have done for that movie? Let's just do that uh, movie The first instead. one felt like that. It, 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 it felt like, it did. It, it felt like it, he it. had half a movie, and then they fired him, and then we'll figure out the other half. Instead of starting from what would Edgar Wright do. They didn't fire him. He left. Keep that mantra all the way through. Brian, I sure. felt like you said you had an unpopular opinion about this movie. Ooh. I, I might. I did. I maybe. Perhaps. No, I remember you saying something specifically Go on. That, like that we were going to want to fight you about this opinion. Oh, please. No, I, th- I, I thought it was good. I thought it was a good palate cleanser. Um, I enjoyed everything with Ant-Man and the Wasp. But. I feel like Michael Pena's character was forced, and I did not need him in that movie. Ouch. Wow. And that's where I think the fight's going to happen because everybody loves that character. Yeah. And he felt for like his whole presence there didn't make sense to me. I, I, but his whole delivery he is forced. Was there it's that, for it's comic that, relief. Yeah. Right. Yeah. In the first movie, it made sense. He was his partner and, and, and he got roped into, he wasn't even roped into the whole thing. He just, right, was, but, but now like Hank Pym's coming to him. So yeah. he can, for he what? can be, he can be who he's going to be. Right, Hank Pym does, but the point is they didn't need to go to him. They didn't but need they him, did. but they no, did. But they didn't need him. But it doesn't matter what they needed to do; they did. So therefore, he's not forced. Didn't they? Wait, they absolutely did. They needed somebody that wasn't them. They needed somebody that didn't have their face. That was the whole point of his his being there. Right? Was that they needed to operate in the background? Oh yeah. So they, and he could operate up front. Operate what? He didn't do anything. That he got them access to the like the whole the the first the the opening part of the movie was about them doing a job. Nope. I just I just saw this again last night. The only he's there. Why did they go to Michael Pena's character then? Why did they go to X to hide? They went there to hide because they couldn't go to Hank's house and they couldn't go to Scott's house. And he says, so then, "Oh, I think I know somewhere we can hide out." That's it. And they didn't hire okay. them and use them for recon in any way, shape, or form? Didn't hire him, didn't do anything with him. They so didn't use Why was he in the car? Their then? security firm. They didn't do anything. Why was he in the car with them? He was in the car with them because Scott. I thought called- he entered a building. I thought he got hired somewhere and entered a building. Nope. With security clearance. Nope. That's you, I'm, uh, nope. I don't know what I'm missing. They they didn't need him. They didn't need him I- until until the very end. So, wait. And Scott and Scott calls him pretty much to help stake out the front of the building, which Hope was already doing. But they then he punched him. a guy. But he but saved the he day, right? The yeah, right. He, he yeah, knocked out yeah. the he, truth he, serum. He, tased, he, he punched Walton Goggins. So Great. that was super helpful. He Brian, punched Walton Goggins Brian. after they already Brian, got what they needed. Brian, I, I want to say something. Uh, stop. 
applying logic to oh, this because you're right, and I, I I'm not a fan of this at all. <laughs> I want to be on the record saying I hate how right you are right now. I'm just saying it felt. I, no, 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 I I get it. Don't no more talking. You're right. Just it just up. felt like they shoehorned him in just so we can have a three minute. Uh, it was scene awesome. Yes, that's with him yeah, I want the story. A story. Give me the story. That's what I want because that was his best part and, of Ant Man One. The truth, I'm, the I'm truth over here trying to defend it because I mean they they kept him mixed into scenes, making me feel like he belonged there. Right. They, I'm not saying you're not right. I'm saying I don't care. I want the story. They, they, no, that's fine. You cannot care at all. But my point you. is, you could remove that entire part of the story and still have the same movie. I'm, I'm so angry that you're right. <laughs> I'm so angry because I loved Michael Penny in this movie. And you're right. You just, you cut, uh, just like here, here's the thing. Here's my complaint with the movie. If, if we're just starting off with this, uh, they, uh, uh, the, the villains were weak. Like Walter Goggins literally drove the movie places. Like literally was just there to be in a car and transport from one place to another. Yeah, but and, I don't and, think... and then and then the, the the ghost at the end. We I'm not even going to start with quantum magic. Uh, ghost we we sympathize with and kind of feels like she's part of the team afterwards. The the real villain was the threat of going back to jail. Like that was the the bad guy. No. I don't think so at all. I, I think the the villain was Hank's hubris. And Hank had That is to, just Hank as had, lame as the threat of going back to jail. But that's but that's the point. He has to get over himself and Scott needs to get over, you know, his right. fear of screwing well, everything up. Like it, it it was a character development movie. Sure. Marvel has I had think a, that's fine. Marvel has had a great streak recently of having good villains in their movies. And, and, she, and Ghost was a good villain. Uh, you sympathized with her. Uh, you go, sympathized with her the entire time yep. until she said, I'm going to go kidnap Scott's kid. And then you said, oh, no, this is not a good person. Right. And that's exactly what you want a villain to do. No, you want to feel like she was in an immense amount of pain. And, uh, yeah, Absolutely. All right, I had a problem with it. I also you had a problem with this with the the so we set up this whole sleight of hand and magic thing, right? He yeah, does yeah, several magic good. tricks, and every single time anyone does any magic, he goes, "How did you do it?" Someone asks, "How did you do that? How did you do that? How did you?" Someone demands an explanation. We even have an FBI agent in in his office trying to learn magic, and then we have quantum healing, right? We have we have Michelle Pfeiffer using wonderful magic to heal ghost and not a single person did what they did any other time they saw fake magic which was how did you do that like magic was such a cop out it was like how can we end she this movie ex- in a minute no 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 no, no. the magic was all about she said the, it, end of the, movie. the quantum realm changes you right i'm no, not the same person the quantum realm i get, changes I get you. that and i think that's what we'll we can explore in the next another ant-man movie but the, the whole magic thing was scott uses it twice to bait and switch ghost and to misdirect the FBI. He uses it twice. That's where the magic plays in. Has nothing to do with what Janet does to ghost. Janet just gets out of the quantum realm and expels some of that quantum energy into ghost to help her feel better, which is why she's not cured because right. we have to go back into the quantum realm to get more energy oh. to try and figure out how to save so her. So lame. That's not lame. Other than that, yeah. love the movie. Loved it. Yeah, I loved it too. Josh, I would love to hear your thoughts on this building, man. I, from the trailer, you've had issues with this building. I don't need no, to hear it, well, more the, about the, the, the building and the. No, building. my my big problem was at the very end of the movie. Like, but where we're gonna end is on a beach, and we're gonna we're gonna blow this building back up on some grass near a beach. That house not gonna be there in a year. Like just <laughs> right. Not only that, you have no foundation, you have no plumbing, you have no electrical, you have no gas. I what? Why would you expect anyone to believe you can just blow up a house or a building? I mean, you can't. You can't. It's it doesn't work that way. The same way I can believe that a man can grow to be a hundred feet tall. <laughs> just about to say that. <laughs> the same reason I believe that there's a person who's called Ant Man who shrinks and blows himself. I just I, I can't I can't do the, it with the, the building. Here, here's they what, have to stop with the building. Here's what I will say: 
The fact that this is what we're focusing on. Our magic seems really lame. This is very, this buildings is very and, small quibbles. Right, and cars. You know, movie. if a car shrinks, what happens to all the fluid? Then the, the car gets bigger. Where'd the fluids go? Fluid levels are off. Cars don't operate that way. The fact that that's what we have to, to, to nitpick on, good job, Marvel, man, because all the other big stuff we're with. Story, we're there. Uh, villains, uh, listen, at the end of the day, still watched it, still liked Ghost. Walter Goggins was great in this movie. I don't know he why was, you had a problem with him. He was Walter Goggins. He just, you know, he just was. He's great. He's, He's fantastic Again, in everything. He was fine. He was st- way better than, than villains I've seen in five other movies recently. This movie, this movie should not have been called Ant-Man and the Wasp, though. It should have just been called The Wasp with some Ant-Man. Because she was the main focus. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with it. She was badass. She was yep. awesome. Yep. And, like, all of her fight scenes, like, with, like, I love how, like, they they did this really great job of her and, and him, but mostly her, like, using her, her size to her advantage. Yeah. Like... She still has the strength of her normal human self, even when she's in wasp form. And they like when she zips into a guy, they like fly like ten feet. Yeah, and it's awesome. And like and the the way like like they use the shrinking as like ways of like dodging a punch and stuff. That was cool too. Like this movie ratcheted up the action. They they really did. For well sure. above the last movie. It was really well done. Well, and demonstrated that. She was the the best natural selection the whole time, right? She was the most should have gone with him qualified to candidate right. from the beginning for for this role. She already understands the physics of it. She's mastered it. He's going to learn a ton more from her, and did throughout this movie. I I, I will give Marvel a, a huge tip of the hat for their tip of the hat, which was when <laughs> Paul Rudd's character was just like, "So we're just we're just gonna put quant- you guys just put quantum in front of everything." Like, yeah. is, is that what you do? To which I said, bravo, sir. Thank you for being the voice of the people right now. Just saying, ah, shenanigans. And you, you called yourself out, so you win. But but yes, Brian uh, brought up a, an excellent point that I talked over, so I apologize. Let's let's talk about that 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 mid credit scene. Let's let's talk about the end of this movie. Cause uh I went with people who had not seen Infinity War yet. And what? uh what? I understand people like that exist in the world, Brian. I went with no, two people, people are stupid. Two people who had not seen Infinity War yet. Nope. You're so when, stupid. When the radio That's not okay. When, not okay. When the radio went static, and I'm going, no, <gasps> no, no. They're looking at me like I I I I I have six heads. So let's talk about what the hell happened in that, because that was crazy. It wasn't Christian crazy. called that. Christian great called callback. I mean I called it, it weeks ago. Yeah, it was it was totally predictable. Like C- Christian called it after we saw Avengers. He was like, "I bet an Ant Man at the after the movie in that scene in the middle of the credits, a few of them go away." And I'm like, "That makes total sense." Brian said the exact same thing. I just, uh, I you're what, right. What I think is the reason it. I don't think it caught anybody by surprise. I think the reason everybody's freaking out about it is because this movie was fun. It was a palate cleanser yeah. after the, sh- the like the terribleness you feel at the end of Avengers Infinity War. And you get to the credits and you're like, hey, this is great. Life is awesome. And then the mid-credits scene is like, oh, shit, that happened, didn't it? Oh, no. And I guess that's... Oh, now not on top. On top of losing them, now Ant-Man's stuck in the quantum realm. Oh, no. Yeah, but didn't Doctor Strange enter the quantum realm? Yeah, but he gone. What look? Strange I mean, didn't enter the quantum realm. I mean, I mean, maybe it really depends on how. I think he did. If, if you view oh, he quantum realm he as entered a, a quantum realmy type place in in his own he had, like, movie. Nine hands on his one hand. What I'm saying is, like, we have to assume that Stephen Strange figures out where he's at and is able to to still do his thing. No, nope, that's no, not how. Yeah, I don't. I don't out. think so either. No. How does Ant Man get out of there? Um, I can tell you, it's going to involve time travel. Oh, sure. that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Janet specifically says when he's she's going into the quantum realm, avoid a time vortex. If you get in there, we're not going to be able to get you out. Right. And through... So set, Scott's going to find one on purpose. Through set photos, I know that Ant-Man is in this next movie and maybe he's hanging around some folks who look it, like they look yeah. like in the first Avengers. 
he's going to get sucked into a time vortex and end up in 2012. And therefore also just become a natural part of the team. And then of... fix Infinity War. I don't know where it goes from there. Yeah. I just know he's going to get sucked into a time vortex and that's how he gets out. And, and to your initial point, I think you're 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 right, Brian. I said it was it was crazy. It, it really wasn't. Just like you both said, it's completely predictable. I was completely sucked into. Oh, everyone had a great time. Everyone, everyone had a good time. Everyone had a good. No, I don't want anything about to happen now. <laughs> so I, I mean, they 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 got me. Marvel and they Marvel keep on. They time. they oh they twisted the knife even more because at the end of the credits they say oh. Ant Man and the Wasp will return. Period, and that period Which turns into much? a question mark, uh. and you're like. The hell? What? You, you bastards. Stop messing with my emotions. This is supposed to be a happy movie. Yeah, right? Does anyone have any orange slices? Please. <laughs> and then they keep twisting the knife. Because I read an article, uh, an interview with Kevin Feige. Oh, where yes. Someone said, where someone said, so if half the population is gone, it's like, does that include like animals and like dogs and stuff? And he said, all life. And everyone was like, no, not the puppies. <laughs> And then you add, and then you see all these people's reactions because people started freaking out not just because of all all the puppies, but then everybody's like, "Well, what about what about Scott's daughter Cassie? Oh my gosh, she could be gone too. Yep. And so could his ex wife and everything. Like everybody yep. we love. Oh my god, like the FBI agent's probably gone too. We kind of liked him even though he was kind <laughs> of a villain. He was nice. He wanted to go on a date with Scott. That was really. <laughs> he wanted to go out to dinner with Scott at the end. It was very adorable. As we say at the end of every episode, this is not a one-way conversation. We want to hear from you. So talk to us on Facebook or Twitter and Instagram. I swear, we don't yell at you very much. We, we're very friendly. You can also call and leave your voice, so we'll play it on the show. If you have an idea for a topic or thoughts on anything that we say, call 484-373-4119, and we will play it on the air. If you submit a written review, please include your accent of choice, and I will do my best to be not offensive and just make everyone hate us, and I will read your comment. So that's happening. Uh, so thank you so much for making us your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work, and we will see you next week. If you love comics and sci-fi and technology, television, video games, and fantasy, we'll take a listen to our show, I'm sure you'll see. There's many points where we can agree. Like that Martha as a plot point was just too absurd. And Apple versus Android is a case to be heard. And that Josh Frank's new Fantastic Four was a turd. Well, welcome to the club, because you are that kind of nerd. I like the, I like the stretching. Yeah, it was good. You got a good stretch in there. Yeah, good, good stretch, good, good clap, no lag. That's a good sign. Oh, famous last fucking words. <laughs> yeah, seriously, you <laughs> fucked everything up. Now one of us is not recording immediately, and we're not going to realize it until an hour and a half later. Nobody, nobody say they'll be right back now. Nobody do it. All right, well, only time will tell at that point. It, it, it seems like it was something that uh, obviously uh, warranted a lot of conversation. That's a dumb thing to say. So only time will tell, and... Uh, <laughs> It's really dumb. I'm very tired. I, I don't know how to end really. this topic, so we had a I don't have a segue. Listen, Let's it, move it was... On. It was <laughs> Be hand we move on to that. Let's just uh, wrap up this topic correctly. No, oh, that's um, not the way I want to say it. That's not yes, Spider-Man there, 6. There are, in yeah. fact, six that, no, 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 Spider-Man There are. Spider-Man 6. There are six There's soon Spider-Man to be movies. seven. Right. Right. But there are exactly six right now. No. Th- no. And we only tell the origin twice. Right. CJ, I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it there by saying... <laughs> There are not six Spider-Man I movies, when in fact there are. I should have not recorded and just slept. There it is. It's Prime Day. It's not, that's not it. That's not it at all. This I is our... it was, I'm just doing <laughs> random shit. No one said it had to be a theme. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. So thoroughly. I disagree with you, like, on a couple things one night. You know what? It's a good thing CJ got back from New York. This had been a complete shit show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with want, with want. nobody moderating and just you and I arguing, this had been either, well either that or it had been the gr- the greatest thing of all time. We'll I, never know. I will never know. I have no idea. I can just leave now if you want me to leave. That's, I don't think no, it's going to help no. at this point. You, you okay. Stick around. Brian's already angry. I'm not angry. <laughs> Stop saying I'm angry. Brian's defensive. <laughs> I'm not angry. Okay, I'm not getting angry by you saying I'm angry. <laughs> Calm down, sir. I need you to calm down. Don't you tell me to calm down. I need you to calm down. Don't you tell me to calm I will calm calm down down when I want to calm down. Calm down, sir. I need you to calm down. I need you to just return my product. Just return my product. Sir. I don't care if it's open. Sir. Yeah, I used it. What of it? I'm right.
Calm down. I'm going to have to ask you to leave. <laughs> Thank you. We're, we're I'm both... calling the better business. No, 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 there's, no, sir, there needs to be respect on both sides of this, okay? I've respected you. You've said your piece. I need you to calm down and let me speak. Good luck. Okay? I don't care how many dollars you spent here on Reward Zone. You're not getting Tens of dollars. Tens of dollars. All right? You can't run I'm over a toaster customer. and expect me to replace it. I just, I, I can't do that. The people listening don't have this list, so let's, like, walk them through um, it. It's in the show notes. They should pull it up they're and follow gonna, along. They're not going to do that. Let's. It's, 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 it's like... It's like one of those books where you like you, when you read along, you hit the button. Every time you see Aladdin's face, you hit the button, and it goes, "Oh man!" Like you know what books I'm talking about? I do. Yeah, this entire segment is lost now. So Amazon has a list of uh, movies that you could actually go ahead and 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 explore so much. No, explore. Stop explore the explore. list. <laughs> it's not explore. Explore is not the theme of this topic. Say it. Say explore. Do it.